Uh, he worked in a bank. He was a phenomenal trader. Everyone kind of, you know, he was like the trader to kind of aspire to be. And I, and I was chatting to, uh, to one of his colleagues and we were talking about evaluation. And he said, oh, th this guy here, he said, he's got a, um, he does evaluation. He goes every day after the markets have closed, he stays behind. And this is the question, it's how simple it could be. If he made money, he would ask himself the question, how could I have made more money today? If he lost money, the question was, how could I have lost less money today? Welcome everyone to the episode on with Steve Ward. We're going to talk about mindset specifically and how to journal right. Steve is a trading coach that I really admire for his dedication to helping traders grow and helping them build the right mindset in trading. I spoke to him a few times before, but today it's going to be a follow-up to that. So how's it going, Steve? Yep. Good. Thank you, Etienne. And thank you for, uh, for inviting me back onto the, to the podcast again. Awesome. Cool. So we talked a lot about the story in the past and the interview we've done together a few years back about how you've been able to become a trader psychologist and how you've been able to get there. So I'll leave you an interview link below for people to watch it. They want to watch it after to kind of learn more about you and how you've been able to get to where you are today. In psychology, though, a lot of the work people don't realize is done with like the daily habits. Like you can work with a coach, but the daily habits that you do on a continuing basis are a lot more important. Tell me more about some of these habits that can help traders perform at their best in trading. Yeah, so it's, it's a good one. I mean, the, the phrase I always come back down to is um, we become what we practice. So, you know, as we, you know, as, as, as humans, we are a combination of our um, genetics and then alongside that, our environments and our experiences are kind of what we do and where we do it on a daily basis. So what also the controllable factor for all of us is what we do uh, and where we do what we do and how we're being while we're doing it. So my, my um, framework really is when we look at trading performance, there are some core principles um, that we might want to do. So we might say, you know, preparation is a principle that we'd want to do. Traders should be well prepared. That would be the principle. And then underneath that, depending on the trader and their situation, um, the markets they trade and, and their style and strategy, then there will be some practices. So you, you'd call them habits. I would call them practices. These would be the behaviors that the person then does on a consistent basis. And some of those habits are habits around uh, maintaining. So kind of maintaining who we are at a base level. And then we might also have some habits which are developmental habits, so behaviors which we do to, to improve us. So uh, the habits essentially are for me, it's just the behaviors and performance is behavior. So, you know, our trading performance is, uh, is a reflection of what we're doing and how we're being while we're doing it on a moment to moment basis. Interesting. So for people who have bad habits on trading, what are some ways that they can kind of build up the good habits in the market? Well, I think the, the question that I would ask all my clients is, who do I want to become as a trader? And that might be that they've got an idea for themselves, or they might have a, a role model or role models that they're kind of looking towards or a mentor. So I think you need to have a, a starting point. I think what a lot of people do is they read a lot of books or they listen to podcasts and they pick up a lot of kind of habits and here's what traders are doing. Um, from multiple different perspectives and they try and then incorporate all of those into, into what they're doing day to day. So it's a bit of a kind of an organic um, evolution. And what I do with my clients is we say, okay, well, there might be a goal you want to achieve, for example. And then we would just ask the question, who do you need to become that would allow you to achieve that goal? Or they might just have an idea about, you know, kind of the ideal trade. You know, what, what would the ideal trader you be like and, and kind of, you know, in the future, what are they doing? How are they being? How are they trading? What's their life like around that? And, and so on. So we I try and build a, um, a future image for that person, uh, a future self. And then the goal in, in my, my coaching is we try and evolve the person from who they are to who they want to become. And then we can say, okay, well, if we look at the future you as our reference point uh, and we look at the you now, what habits and behaviors have you got currently that are helpful for you, that are useful? And, and also we want to sustain those. Are there ha any habits or behaviors which you are not doing, but the future you is doing? So we need to start to build those new habits in. Um, and there might also be some things that the, the current you is doing habit-wise, which are unhelpful habits. And also we've got to try and let go of those. And ideally we, we replace them with a, with a more useful habit. So then we've kind of got a bit of a roadmap of here's the future you, here's a you now, and what are the behaviors that we need to work on to grow you from who you are to who you want to become. And that's kind of how I kind of frame it around that. And it's quite interesting. You look at the uh, research into uh, habit development um, 
and behavioral change. It's quite useful for people to see behavior change, not just at the behavioral level for the sake of it, but because it's wrapped into an identity, a self that I'm aiming to become in the future. So it's kind of a, it's housed in some of kind of greater value and purpose, not just doing it because I heard it or read it somewhere. Yeah. And I think these days people are really attracted to like the trendy habits, the habits that are coming up that are new that everyone talks about, like meditation, journal sometimes, but it's a lot more about doing the habits that are important to you and give you the results you want. Yeah. And everyone's different. So, I mean, I had a, literally, I was doing a coaching session yesterday with a client who I worked with last year and we're just having a bit of a catch up for 2022. And one of the big takeouts for him, and this is a hedge fund trader who, who had a had a really tough start of the year and had a phenomenal year by the end of it. Um, but one of the big turning points was, was really realizing and accepting and becoming confident in the fact that he is him and there are things that will work for him and there are things that don't work for him. And, and having the confidence to build his trading and, and his trading habits and his process and his approach around himself and his strengths and his interests and his values and his goals and not trying to be and do other people. And I think this is the challenge maybe also particularly for newer traders is obviously, you know, you're, you're trying to get good habits in place, which is good, but you've also got to filter around, um, are those habits the right habits for me? Um, and obviously it's always good to hear what successful traders are doing. And I get to hear that a lot, but also what I hear is there's a huge variation in what individuals are doing. And when I'm working with people, we're always trying to personalize everything. So we, we, we might take a habit idea like um, meditation or mindfulness or journaling or um, a preparation routine. We might start with an idea or a theme and then we might say, okay, well, you know, is that going to work for you? What do you think? And we might have a bit of a play around with it and then we might tailor it. Then we'll test it, get some feedback. We might refine it. So we're always taking a, a, a habit or a, a process or a practice as a starting point, but always with the goal of personalizing it. And sometimes the feedback is, it doesn't work for me. And that's fine. It might work for lots of other people, but if it doesn't work for that person, then it doesn't work for that person. So we've always got to look at the, the individual in their own unique context. And is it useful or not for that person? And again, if it's things like meditation, for some people, maybe it's 20 minutes a day. For other people, maybe it's 10 minutes or it's five minutes three times a day or it's 15 minutes twice a week so it's trying to just you know really always start from the point of here's me here's who i'm trying to become and then how do i kind of filter things through that so that they actually they work for me in my context and that's a very good point you know sometimes in trading people follow other strategies because they hear about them online they hear the returns of them and i think that that strategy will get them to the success they want in trading but it's not really about just strategy, it's about your personality and how you fit into that. I'm curious to know how you kind of develop yourself and how do you understand like who you are exactly in trading? Is it just time and patience and practice that can give you these skills and that knowledge of like who you are? Or are there some things you can do to understand better who you are as a trader? Great, great, great question. So there's, a, there's multiple ways that, that we can do it. And this is how I do it with my clients. So one thing we can do is have a look at what you've been doing already. So we can do some reflection on you know, the trades you've made, the experiences you've had, where you've done well, where you've not done so well. And, and three perspectives I'm always trying to get look at with traders is, or four actually. One is, you know, where do there seem to be some strengths at play? So kind of what, what, what do you appear to be good at? Maybe better than most people might be good at. So kind of what, what are your strengths and maybe what are those kind of real unique strengths? Then we'll have a look at um, what interests you? You know, what, what's interesting? Where, where do you enjoy spending your time while you're trading? And I had this conversation yesterday with, with this client because he's trading in a way which um, is different to other people within his, his fund. And he gets quite a lot of um, feedback about that, that he's maybe, you know, different and so on. But the way he's trading aligns with his interests. And, you know, if you want to be in the markets for a long time, do anything for a long time. If, if, you don't, if it doesn't play to your strengths and doesn't interest you, it's very hard to keep going, particularly when it gets tough. So, you know, strengths, interests, uh, values, kind of what matters to me. So I think those three things are really core. And of course, the other piece of data that's useful is, and where do I tend to make money or lose money? So where, where, where am I successful? So, I think, you know, reflection um, can allow you to get some insights into that. And we're always doing that in coaching. We're always looking for clients to kind of um, have that uh, level of awareness. Then what I do alongside that in fact, in fact, alongside that piece, we'll also, if the client's actively trading and for long enough, also we can get some data so we can get some objective trade data and we can run that through 
and we can mine that data and look for you know kind of insights around where their strengths or weaknesses are behaviorally from their trading data so that's kind of a, a subjective and an objective perspective and then the second piece that i'll do with clients is we'll do some personality testing and i have one that measures kind of uh, risk and decision making and how they deal with the consequences of, of things going wrong and how they deal with uncertainty and so we can run that personality assessment. And then from that, it will tell us about that person's kind of risk type, how they perceive risk, how they manage risk, how they react to risk and uncertainty. And it will give us some of their upside tendencies and it will give us some of their downside tendencies. And then what we look at is how, what are your strengths personality wise? And, and the core here is, and how does that align to how you're approaching the markets? So people have different um, perceptions and reactions to risk and uncertainty. And some people are quite sensitive to risk taking and to uncertainty. And so they might, you know, um, trade smaller size, trade shorter time frames. They might use relative value or spread trade to kind of reduce exposure to risk to keep it comfortable. Other traders have a much higher risk tolerance. And so they might be more um, able or willing to trade, you know, bigger size trades, hold them for longer and kind of weather the volatility as, as, the, as the positions move over time. They're probably more able to trade markets that are less liquid. Uh, where you've got less kind of certainty and, le and less knowns about getting in and getting out. So I think there's a piece which is about, you know, also having this awareness of who I am uh, as a person and my preferences and how does my, how does that align with my trading approach? And, you know, through coaching, I have had many examples where people have been struggling with their trading. And when we look at it, essentially they're kind of one type of person trying to trade in a, in a way that doesn't really suit them. It's a bit like a, you know, a, a marathon runner trying to be a sprinter or vice versa. You can do well, you can keep getting better, keep getting faster, but it always feels like hard work and never quite like it's kind of like you're kind of going with the flow of the river. It always feels a bit of an upstream struggle. So, so I think, again, those tests, and again, there are many tests available for free, you know, online that people can take, can give you useful insights um, into what some of your strengths might be at, at sort of the personal level. And then it's a case of looking at all that data. And then we're trying to, again, always coming back down to aligning the trader with the strategies and the markets they're trading. And we're trying to find that sort of, like, sort of sweet spot somewhere in the middle. So on one side, you have people who say like, oh, just follow the strategy, like follow the process and you make money with it and you'll be able to be successful with the strategy. And other people like you who say, you should just fit your trading style to your personality. So what does that kind of fit in? What's the line between this? Are you able to do one or the other? Or how do you combine both? So this is, I think, one of the key things that, that's important for everyone to recognize. Uh, and if I look at traders that have been trading for a long time and been successful, they're probably doing things differently to what they were doing when they first started off. So they've realized at some point, we've all got to start somewhere. We need something to kind of get us into the markets, um, some kind of process, some sort of thing, something to believe in and give us some confidence to put our, our money at risk. But over time, that needs to be go from standardized into more of an individualized process. And that's the only way you can really achieve full success over time. So the reality is that every trader, coach, mentor, however you want to frame it, anyone who's selling some kind of system or process, it may well be very successful for them, for that person. But on our risk assessment um, that we use, our risk personality assessment, there are nine different types of, of risk personality. And some of them are opposing. So they're completely different. And what will happen there is somebody on one side of, of, of the wheel as such with one set of risk preferences might have a system that works and it works really well for them. So, you know, maybe it requires them to be um, patient and then maybe it's longer time frames and you're kind of it's riding through the trend and holding it over time. And it's, you know, a few trades a month. Opposite them might be people who like to be in and out, like novelty, like to be involved in things, are much more spontaneous. And they will have a challenge following that system because for them, they're going to get bored. It's not engaging enough. So it, it, whilst it's easy to say, here's a system that works, what, what people are really saying is, I've got a system that works for me, and here's the data. And that is, that is true, we, or we'll assume it's true. But it doesn't mean that same system will work for all people, because some people are going to be completely the opposite in many of the core trading personality traits to that person. So then that person... And we see this even institutionally, you know, people go onto a trading desk, they're taught a way of trading, doesn't quite match for them. So they, they don't quite achieve what they're capable of until you do some tweaking and tuning. And then suddenly the person starts flying. So I think it's a case of start somewhere, but always in, in the mind of the trader as they progress should be, 
how is this going for me? You know, what am I finding easy? Am I finding it difficult? Because the reality might be that sometimes it's not that the person can't be a good trader. It's just that the person's not going to be the best trader they can be trading in a particular way. And they're going to have to look at changing some of those other time frames or the way they manage the risk or the market's liquidity. Um, and, and, and then there's other factors around, you know, how many hours per day have I got, motivational factors and so on. But at the personality level, that blend is true. So I would be, I would be cautious of people saying, you know, if you just follow the, or, or anybody could follow this system and make money, because whilst that sounds like it might be true, um, the reality is it isn't. It's like saying anybody could become a uh, high level sprinter. Some people are going to be better long distance runners than they are sprinters. That's just a biological fact. Uh, and I think it's the same in trading. Some people will make really good trend traders and others are going to make much better price action traders, as example. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's a case of being aware that people are different and they'll have different successes with different styles of trading and different markets to trade them in. Awesome. Now we got to talk about journaling because I was really impressed to see that in the past year you launched a trading journal, a paper trading journal. I've been using it for some time and I really like it. But tell me more about what was the inspiration for creating that paper trading journal? So it's interesting. I mean, everyone always says, oh, why did you do it on paper and why didn't you do it online? And the main reason behind why we, why we chose that, and it's myself and, and, and um, Simon Cottrell, who's a fund manager with kind of co-authors and partners in this. And I think when you're, when you're doing a trade log and you're collecting trade data, numerical data, I would definitely have a preference for online spreadsheets, you know, um, database, because then you can mine that data in many interesting ways, create visuals. And, and that's definitely the way forward. The journal that Simon and I have created is a little bit different. It's called Trader's Mind Journal. So it's kind of a psychological and performance focused journal. And what we wanted to do, the reason why we've made it paper is we wanted to take people almost like away from the screens and then have a chance to write. Now, when we're writing, it's a different process to when we're typing or just filling in a spreadsheet. It's different um, neurologically in the brain, you know, and it's slower and it's more thoughtful. And so we wanted to kind of make it a, a, a different process um, away from the screens where you can slow things down, think about it. And there's kind of a cathartic effect, you know, when we're writing down about our emotions and how we're feeling and so on as well. So it was really that that made it paper. Um, and it's really, so this, this journal is about uh, psychology and performance, uh, the mind and about then kind of mastering and you know, kind of um, getting better at trading. That's, that's the, the goal of it. And we created it for two reasons. One, Simon is a, is a huge proponent of mastery and getting better at the craft, which, which he he's, has done very well himself, uh, and also journaling as a part of that. And for the last two years, I've had a, an increasing um, awareness of people asking me about, you know, how do I keep a journal? What questions should I ask? How do I structure it? How do I get the flow right? And um, so it was just a, a little pinch point where Simon was talking to me about he would like to create a journal for himself um, and maybe do something we could push out for other people. I've been doing this work with my own traders, creating a whole variety of kind of personalized journals, but with similar frameworks. And so, yes, we put our heads together and I had to go at creating it. And I think from memory, it came out July um, last year. So it um, and um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's got some daily pages where you can do some mental preparation, do some daily reflection. That then leads into an end of week review. And then it's got a, a look at the week ahead. And then at the end of the month, there's a monthly review. And then there's a look at, you know, kind of the, the month ahead. And we've tried to wrap it all together. So it's kind of a um, feels continuous and progressive. And there are some little mastery tasks each week. So there's some little mental training exercises in there. Uh, we've got a performance scorecard, which is a wheel with eight trading performance factors that people can keep in a sort of a very visual way each week. And, um, and it's designed to be action focused all the way through. It's like reflection look for insights, take some action, reflect, insight, action. So the goal ideally that we wanted is people would work their way through it, get some benefit from the daily journaling, from doing the writing, but ideally also see their performance improve over the, uh, the three-month period that the journal lasts for as well. Yeah, very cool. One thing I really like a lot is when you pick up the journal, you have like this uh, training scorecard when you open it. So the first page, you got to fill in the scorecard and you kind of get to see where you are at on a kind of skill level in different categories, which is really good to improve. And then every month you're able to kind of go back on it and see how you improve, how you change. And that's, I think, really cool. Um, maybe you want to show people like what's inside, like on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, like what do you fill in and some parts of it and, and give a bit of an overview of the, of the journal. So I'll show this is the uh, performance scorecard. So it's kind of like the eight factors and it's got the wheel there. And we did this um, 
as the wheel with the dots that you can hopefully see kind of joining together. And the idea again was just to kind of do some things in a different way, let the brain look at it differently. But once you kind of know the questions to go with it, you, that could be a, as you probably found, you know, it's a one, two minute, three minute exercise. And even just doing that and it's weekly, um, you know, it can be enough. So, you know, we've got a, Simon's a big fan of the quotes. So, you know, we've got a few uh, quote pages in there as we go through, which are quite, quite nice. Uh, people seem to like those. I know everyone's got their favorite quotes in trading. So yeah, then we've got the, uh, the daily pages. So kind of this page here is sort of the get ready for the day and, and mental preparation. Again, we've tried to keep it kind of very light on questions, very intuitive, a few little, you know, things that you can tick or color in, whatever your preferences are, make it quite intuitive. Just a few questions to reflect at the end of the day and uh, find a weekly. I mean, the, the challenge with this is trying to make it easy to keep. So it's uh, each week, there's a little mastery task. There's a mental training activity to do each week. And they kind of tie in with the theme of the scorecard and just trading performance and trading mastery. Then you get the, uh, there's a weekly check-in. So again, a few questions to review the week, do the scorecard, see where you've done well, see where you can improve. And then it's about really getting ready for the week ahead, which again, I think is an important process. Again, pretty light, nothing too time consuming. Maybe it's 10, 15 minutes, start of day, end of day. And I'll just find, the, uh, find a monthly one just to show a bit of the month. And then what we try and do really is when you get to monthly, you know, you, we, we start setting goals and working at that level. And the idea is that the goals that go from the, uh, from the month then come down into the, into the weekly and down into the daily. Just bear with me. I'll just find a, a monthly review. There we go. So monthly review on one page, goals and actions on the next page. And then uh, just a page or a double page spread for what we've just called it creative space. Because what I think one of the processes that's really important that I encourage in my traders is to recognize the importance of, of creativity, particularly in staying in the game long enough, because you've got to keep this kind of, you've got to keep mentally or keep the, the creative circuits fired up because it is a, there's a large amount of creativity in trading, you know, looking for new trading ideas, generating ideas, trying to do things differently to other people. So we kind of put that little double page spread in just to kind of take some time maybe each month go away, somewhere quiet, have a little think, see what comes to mind, things to try, things to research, things to develop um, in order to try and improve your trading. So there's quite a lot of different, we wanted to make it more than just each day filling in the same form. So that, that the weekly questions, the monthly, the daily are all slightly different. You've got the diagram to fill in, there's mastery tasks to do, you've got the creative space. So we try to make it a little bit more of a holistic, engaging process. Um, and that seems to be what you know, people like that. That's been the feedback. So one of the cool things about this journal is the fact that you are able to get organized really well. Like you have questions you can answer, uh, you kind of guide it through the whole process of journaling, which is really good, I think, for a lot of people. How does someone who's more like easygoing, doesn't like much structure, prefer to do things in their own terms, prefer to go slow, more creative, how would they benefit from this though? Well, interestingly, so some of my clients, and we look at their personality traits, and they're in, the, uh, they're in that zone where we, where we know they are, they like novelty, they don't like routine, they don't want repetition, they don't like structure. So they're the people actually who are least likely to buy the journal in the first place. So, so that's, that's one thing that's going to happen. Uh, some people won't buy it because they don't want that kind of um, framework or process. The reality is the people that probably are least likely to buy it are the ones who's what we would call their growth edge. So the kind of the area for improvement or to develop, to improve, might well be having a bit more structure or having a bit more process, but having just enough, not too much. So um, it's just one of those paradoxes that the people that probably need it the most might be the ones who are least likely to, um, to buy it in the first place. So, um, and I've got a lot of people, who, my clients who are like that, who are using it. And again, this is why we've kept it pretty light on questions, quite intuitive. Um, if people don't want to answer questions, don't answer that question. If you want to write your own question in, you can write your own question in. Uh, we've got people who aren't even traders who have bought it and are just changing the word trading for things like leader or athlete because they like what the journal does and they're just changing the language. So, and we've tried to keep you know plenty of spare space for observations, for notes, uh, and to personalize it. But the reality is, you know, as you all know, you're very experienced and, and uh, got expertise in this. All traders are very different. They've all got different styles, strategies. So. When I'm working with my clients over the years, we've always created journals personalized to the individual and they've constructed it. This is more obviously a bit of a mass market. And I, and probably for many people, you might buy it once, you read through it, you get a flavor of how to structure a journal. 
you'll like some questions, maybe not others, and you could go away then and create your own. So, you know, it might, for some people, it'd be a bit of a template or just a way of a framework to use. Uh, other people we know have already bought, you know, three or four copies and are kind of working their way through each quarter. So different people will use it in different ways. But uh, it, for many, it might just be a bit of inspiration and a bit of a, a guideline. And that, that, that's great too. How would you use a journal for someone who doesn't trade every day? They might take it if trades a week, if trades a month, or maybe just a couple of trades a year. But how would they to benefit from that? I think if they're doing, if they're trading very, very, very infrequently, then it might not. This journal, as it's constructed, may not be the most useful. But certainly for a you know, day trader, swing trader, and even maybe slightly longer time frame than you know, going out from swing into some of the, the sort of the medium time frames, probably quite useful. I mean, a lot of my clients, obviously, they are some are trading very regularly, like hundreds of times per day. Um, some are trading, you know, a few times per month. So you know, and and, and some less than that. But I think even the ones that are probably in that medium time frame zone, they are obviously still doing research, still doing analysis, they're still doing trading work, and that's what they can be recording and writing about. And they, you know, they're still kind of obviously institutional people still turning up to work, so they still need to be ready for the day ahead and what might happen and so on. So, but I think once you get into maybe very long term investing, it may not, as it is at the moment, it may not be the most useful. Um, for, for that category. So, but yeah, for, for the majority of people uh, who we spoke to um, up front when we're doing the research, um, they found it useful even on like a, as a, like a day-to-day -day organizer preparation and so on as well. So, but um, again, it will suit some people. It'll be almost like perfect for some people. It will be good for others and it will be, you know, less useful as you kind of maybe move out in terms of frequency of trading and, and time frame and so on. Yeah, definitely. And I think people these days don't have the chance to write much on paper, like everything is online. So uh, writing on paper is pretty rare these days. But you don't put your trade in journal, right? So you put them online somewhere else. And that journal is only for psychology, your mindset and your performance, right? And it's something we've been asked about, you know, where's the space to, to write my trades in? And we try and say, look, we, we, we're trying to sell it. Um, we, we market it as a, this is not a trading log. This is not a trade log. It's not a trade journal. This is a trader's mind journal. So we kind of, we, we try to uh, name it to make it clear that it is about the mind the performance and, 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 um, and, and the psychology and, and, and a bit about physiology in there as well. So it's all of the things really that aren't the actual trading data. And it's really the two would complement each other. Um, but I think the benefits of, as I said earlier, you know, that, if you're keeping trading data, you want to keep it so you can mine that data. So you want that online, you know, want it, you know, you want it to be in a database on a spreadsheet. But when you're doing the more psychological side, I think then it's more effective for most people when it's not just done typed in next to your trade data. So, and for some people, and again, we're not saying one way is right or wrong. We're just saying, look, for lots of people, you want to do everything on a spreadsheet and there are some good spreadsheet there's some good data you know databases there's some great software that people can use to do that if that's how you want to do it for some people they like to have their trade logs and their psychology stuff all on paper and that's fine too and there'll be some who want a blend so we're not trying to say there's a right way a wrong way or this is the way we just say look if you want to have a journal that's a bit more around or the thing that leads traders journal is about thoughts feelings emotions um the kind of um, reflections and the insights on their trading. That's the stuff that people do the least of, but actually has massive value. So we're trying to say, look, if you want to do a bit more of that and you're finding it hard or you haven't got a process, this might help you. Um, but yeah, to sit alongside the trade log, um, ideally. And that's how Simon uses his. I mean, that's, you know, he's a, obviously he was a big input into this. He's got um, trading data software that he uses. He's got a trade log that's, that's all kind of um, numerical. And then he's got his kind of reflection um, piece which is which is now the mind journal and it's good to see that real traders are actually like, using the journal it's not just like a journal that's based on nothing it's based on people who are actually using it and asking themselves the same questions on the journal which is really good now i'm curious like all things some people are going to use the journal stick to it for the long term and be successful with it some people will try it a few days and give up then stop and they won't really get anything out of the journal so do you have any tips on how to make this habit of doing a journaling every day stick like how do you make this habit work out for the long term yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because I always say, you know, it's one that, and we talk about it actually in the journal, many people probably have kept a journal at some point uh, and then stopped and maybe even restarted and then stopped. And so the, the, the core point for me is, has to be 
seen as being valuable. So you have to have, you have to attach a value to doing it. If you're getting no value from the journal, then it's quite hard to do it for the sake of doing it. So and that's often because when people have kept journals and I've had this conversation with them and I say, why did you stop? And they'll go, oh, I wasn't getting anything from it. Or I couldn't see what the value in doing it was. And that would make sense. You know, most of us won't do a habit um, or make the time to construct a habit if we see no value in doing it. So I think the starting point is you've got to understand the value of the journal and where it sits within trading. So, you know, for me, that the high performance trading process is there's preparation, there's execution, then there's evaluation, and then there's improvement. And so after you've been executing your trade, you need to evaluate those trades and yourself as the trader. And then you've got to take that evaluation and you've got to turn it into actions which lead to improvement. And a lot of people have kind of gone uh, preparation, execution, evaluation, but then not really had this link between my evaluation leading into actions that actually improve me as a trader or improve my trading process. And that's what we've tried to do in the journal all the way through is it's always about reflection, insight, and it's action. Reflection, insight, action. And that's the value. The insights are useful. You want the insight, but an insight without action doesn't improve you or your process in any way. So I think a lot of people's journals historically haven't been action focused. Many people start journals or they buy journals that are very complicated or they take a long time to complete. And for most people, unfortunately for behavior, the biggest predictor of behavior is how easy the behavior is to do. So if you have a very long, complicated journal to keep and it's not easy to keep it, you're less likely to keep it. So what we've tried to do is make the journal relatively easy in terms of less questions, make it quite nice. It kind of feels nice, looks nice, uh, graphical, visual, some writing, but not too much. So we try to make it easy and enjoyable, hopefully, or some element of, of joy in keeping the journal to make it easier because things that are easy, we will do. Things that are hard are less likely to sustain. So. Um, but so I think the big picture is you've got to see the value in journaling, see it as a process, as part of trading. It may not be always easy to do. Uh, and that's the nature of all high performance, um, whether it's sports, poker, trading, business, whatever it is. And then it's how do I make it easy to do? So, you know, what's the time of day when I'm most likely to be able to keep my journal? Uh, for some of my clients, I like to go away somewhere. Maybe it's to a coffee shop, have a nice coffee, do the journaling. So make it an experience to keep the journal, you know, particularly when they're doing the weekly or the monthly reflections. Also, you make it make it something valuable. Go somewhere nice to do it uh, or do it in an enjoyable environment. So kind of, you know, give make it something more than just filling out a spreadsheet. Um but again, everybody is different, but it's got to start to me from a place of value and then a commitment to doing the behavior as a part of becoming a, a better trade. And if you're not that committed to improving, then actually you'll never be that keen on journaling because you'll never have that connection between mastery and, and, and improvement and the journal as being a part of that process. And that's the connection that we're trying to make really. So, but yeah, but ease, you know, I think in all trading behavior, you've got to think about how can I make any behavior as easy as possible to do and make the good behavior easier than the alternative? That, that's that's the, uh, the challenge we've all got. Yeah, and like everything you got to do for a couple of days to result and make it stick. It's not going to be like just one week you do it, then you're done and you get good results with it. It's going to be a long-term practice. And that's kind of how you get results with that journal, I think. Now, Steve's point here is that you don't have to buy this like that journal. If you want to take a sheet of paper, you do it on your own. That's fine too. That's totally good. You can do it many ways. Yeah, absolutely. And I would encourage people at the start of it, um, maybe to do that and go, I'm interested in journaling and, and just to construct their own one. And then I would say, you know, that the, the sort of the questions to think about. So this could be done daily, weekly or monthly, depending on the time frame that people are trading over, is you want to be asking a question around what have I done well and how can I do more of that? What could I have done better? You know, and what can I do to kind of, you know, improve upon that? A question around uh, what have I learned, so kind of insights and, and reflections and learning from, from the period, the day, the week or the month. And then what action am I going to take based on the above three questions going forward into, into the next time frame? So even just those four questions being asked regularly can be really powerful. And it always reminds me, there was a, a trader I worked with when I first started out, so it's probably about 2006 or seven. Uh, he worked in a bank. He was a phenomenal trader. Everyone kind of, you know, he was like the trader to kind of aspire to be. And I, and I was chatting to, uh, to one of his colleagues and we were talking about evaluation. And he said, oh, th this guy here, he said, he's got a, 
Um, he does evaluation. He goes every day after the markets have closed. He stays behind. And this is the question. It's how simple it could be. If he made money, he would ask himself the question, how could I have made more money today? If he lost money, the question was, how could I have lost less money today? Nothing more than that. That was his evaluation, but always stay behind. So every day after trading, everyone else goes home. He would stay behind 5, 10, 15 minutes. Simple questions, but just the continual process of doing that day in, day out, 200 and something trading days per year. You know, those little insights you get, the little reflect, reflections, the little changes you make. And suddenly, over the years, can make a huge, huge difference. So, you know, I think journaling always starts small. You can always evolve it over time. The danger is people kind of go too complex, then give up. So it could just be four questions. It could be as simple as that. It could be one question, two questions. Um, and, and then you can grow it. But I think it's just, this is also true for habits. What's the smallest way in that I can start with? Meditation, same thing. People start with 15, 20 minutes. Why not start with three to five minutes? or one minute, and then then grow it as you build a habit. And then you can kind of, once you've got the habit, add to it. But make it easy to build the habit first, and then you can layer in beyond that. Yeah, that was definitely wise advice. I appreciate it a lot. I'll leave the link in the description. People want to check it out and buy the journal. It's called the Trader's Mind Journal. So I'll leave that link below for you guys to check it out. Now, Steve, where can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out after the interview? Yeah, so two or well, three places, really. So um, in my broader work, I guess, institutionally uh, uh, at that level uh, would be the website, which is performanceedgeconsulting.co.uk. And then for those who are specifically sort of in the retail and, and private uh, trading space, um, I have a, a separate website for that community, which is tradeatyourbest.com. So you could find me there and anything around the journal that has its own unique um, website, which is Traders Mind Journal. Dot com. And actually, Etienne, I was chatting with Simon, actually, and uh, we'd like to offer um, your listeners um, a special discount on the journal, if, um, if you'd like to do that. Which sure, be that'd be awesome, for sure. Very simple, EC in capitals and then 20, and that'll get them 20% off the uh, price of the journal. So EC20. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. I really appreciate the discount code. I think it's going to be really useful for people to use. And I know that people will get a lot of value out of it. I personally got a lot of value out of the journal. I really appreciate them. I'm using it all the time, which is really good. And I appreciate your discount for sure. The discount will be in the show notes or the description below. So you can check that out right there. And thank you, Steve, for your time. I'll catch you pretty soon.